Okay, I'm recording now. Okay, welcome back to the show, everybody. And I hope you had a great break. And I'm really happy to welcome now, straight from his family holidays at the Southern Spanish Beach, Luis Bernardo de Quiros. Can you switch screen? Okay, we'll bow in. Okay, so the first question I have uh, for the group is, are there any Spanish speakers here? And should I do this in two <laughs> languages or two English? There's actually quite a lot of Spanish people here now. Okay, okay, I'll do it in two languages then. Entonces voy a, voy a hacer este 45 minutos, esta clase la voy a hacer en dos idiomas, inglés y español, para los españoles que están aquí también. Okay, so what I'd like to do is, uh, I'd like to focus, of course, on swords. So this is really about sharing what I've been working on the last few months. Lo que quiero hacer en esta clase es enfocar un poco en Boken y en Taijutsu y es, eh, compartir un poco lo que está trabajando en los últimos meses. And so, so what I'd like to do is, um, I'd really like to focus on three things within, within sword work and then take that into a little bit of body work. And there is this idea of whole body awareness, that having a global sense of your body, uh, this idea of extension, this principle of extension, and then the whole idea of generating power. Yeah, and these are basically things which run through the Taijutsu system as well. So, lo que quiero enfocar en esta clase es la idea de poder sentir tu cuerpo de una totalidad, y la idea de extensión, y también la idea de cómo generar fuerza en Aikido. These three basic things which will translate into weapons in Taijutsu, you can really work on them clearly within, within simple movements within the sword. And being able to feel your body completely, three dimensionally, totally is really, uh, in a way, essential when you do taijutsu and you do techniques because what you're really doing is you're connecting with someone and you really need to feel their body and you need to be able to feel the state of their center because actually all the techniques are about controlling someone's center. Entonces, cuando hablamos de desarrollar la capacidad de sentir tu cuerpo entera, eso es necesario en taijutsu porque tienes que sentir el, cuerp el cuerpo del otro. Tienes que poder sentir el centro del otro y controlarlo de esa manera. Extension, which is amazingly well developed with weapons because you really have to extend yourself into the weapon and make it part of yourself, is really like an essential component for connection. Yeah, you seek out someone, you seek out your partner through this sense of extension and you make the connection that way. Yeah, so this, this ability to extend powerfully is really going to be also related to your ability to make a strong connection with your partner. So, the estabilidad de extender con, con fuerza con potencia es esencial para hacer la conexión con tu compañero, para poder hacer como un puente con ellos y sentir lo que está pasando con ellos. Entonces, the thing which with weapons they really do. The other thing, of course, is how we develop power. And power for us is whole body power. We're not really interested in one part of the body generating the, the power and the rest of the body kind of becoming a platform for that. The, the idea is actually that your whole body, guided from the center, from the ground up, generates the power that you use. And we call this, of course, Kokyu. But I mean, I, I tend to try to the body is involved in the movement. So again, this principle of using your whole body as a unit, as a coordinated unit, is essential in Taijutsu and in weapons. And you can really work in it in the solo. Entonces, la manera que de, de generar fuerza es esencial que todo tu cuerpo esté involucrado, que no solo una parte del cuerpo está haciendo la técnica, sino que la fuerza viene de todo el cuerpo des, de, desde el centro. Yeah? So those three aspects, uh, whole body sense, extension, and um, uh, this idea of power, Kokyu. Yeah? So we'll work on that with the sword. Now, Saito Sensei, uh, when he did the seven Suburi, he would say that if you really only had time to do anything, do one, five, and seven. So these three Suburi are the most important ones. And if you've got no time, then number one is clearly the most important one. This is where you organize the body, yeah, most powerfully. So I want to look today at one, five, and seven, and then I want to take that into some, to, to some other stuff, whatever comes, yeah? So the Saito Sensei nos decía que de los siete suburbia, uno, cinco, y siete eran los más importantes, que eran los, como el resumen de todo, y si no tenías tiempo para hacer los tres, el número uno es el más importante. He made a joke once about, Basically, the first suburb being the mother of all the suburb, the mother of all the cuts, and I think that is really the case. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're going to begin with the first Saburi. So, having okay, just stand in, in position. Some space between your toes, your heels slightly touching. You're in a kind of a triangle. Yeah. Okay. Go for the for the book end, and then open up with your foot and come into Hami. Yeah. Now, when you're in Hami, you're not straight. The sense of being wedged in triangular formation there. So there's a slight feeling of being wedged. Yeah. So it's triangular. Okay, so we're just going to the first Saburi clearly here. Okay, slowly raising, find the back, pause, and then dropping, and then there. Yeah. Raise, pause, and drop. Raise, pause, and drop. Raise, and drop. So continue in two movements. Yeah. So two clear movements. Okay, three number one. Okay. okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, um, when we talk about developing whole body awareness, Okay, when we do the Saburi, there's this way of you walk through the body and you understand each part of the, the body, how it basically works within the Saburi. And this draws your attention to the body, but also brings it into your awareness. Yeah. So the way I work with that is first I work with the hands, then I work with the legs, the feet and the legs. And this is with me. Then I come to the core of the body, and this is all basically mechanics. And then I go to more sense, more, 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 more abstract stuff, yeah, more the feeling level, yeah. Entonces, cuando trabajamos los suburbios y queremos desarrollar este sentido de todo el cuerpo, podemos ir por todo el cuerpo mirando lo que hace falta para poder hacer los suburbios. Entonces, as I work through the different points, let your attention come to that part of the body and let your attention fill that part of the body out. Yeah? Okay? And then as we do that gradually and you bring your attention to it, you fuse everything into one sense. But basically, most of us have a kind of a, like a mosaic body sense. Part of it is blank. Some parts of it are very weak. Some parts have overdeveloped. And what you need to have is a global sense of being balanced and in the center. So your body should be present in your mind. So as we go through the whole Subri, let that fill out all the pieces. Entonces, voy a hacer todos los puntos básicos, no todos, bastantes puntos básicos para el Subri. Y deja que eso informe tu cuerpo y la sensación de estar lleno, que tu cuerpo está informado, let it sort of fill out. Entonces, lo primero son las manos, yeah, the hands. Okay, with the hands, okay, really feel that the grip is in the back. So the, the grip is really in the small fingers. And the front is really quite relaxed, yeah? So it's kind of more like this. So if you open the palm, you're going to be across the hand. You won't be like this, you'll be like this, yeah? So the grip in both hands is in the back, yeah? This kind of feeling there, yeah? As you raise the sword, the hands are soft, yeah? And then you cut down, yeah? Raise and cut. Raise and cut. Okay, the key thing is that when you move, the hands are going to, the fingers will be very soft and then focus at the end. And then focus at the end. Focus at the end. And both hands grip at the same time at the end. This is the focus point. Yeah? So just the hand work. Raising and focus. Raising, focus. Raising, focus. Raising and focus. Yeah, continue like that. Make sure you grip at the back. El enfoque es de las dos dedos de atrás de los dos manos. Los dos manos igual. Desde atrás, no desde delante, desde atrás. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, be careful at this point. Yeah, this is actually when we do when we do taijutsu. A lot of the time, what, what we're really working with is we're looking for spiral work all the time. This is another thing. Yeah, but basically, what you see a lot of the time is that the, the wrist becomes stiff. Yeah, so when you raise the sword, try not to do this. Try not to do this. Okay, the sense is that you're doing the, the sense is that you're doing this. You're doing this. So it's not that movement. It's this movement. Yeah. So I'm raising this way. So this is really going to be where we go later when we do look at Kokyo a little bit, but it's this feeling and it's not that feeling. Yeah. So this is not frozen. So all the joints are mobile and what you're doing is you're working in a spiral. 
So really try and feel that as you raise the sword, this is happening. Okay? This is happening. And not that is happening. Yeah? Okay, so it's not rigid, it's spiraling. Yeah? Okay, work on that for a little bit. Any shots? Okay. Take your time. So do it real slow and feel that you spiral. And then you spiral down. So don't count mobile. <clears throat> okay, so those of you who know me, you, you must be getting bored with me repeating these things thousands of times, but I keep seeing them all the time, so okay. When you raise, you need to keep your weight kind of the sensation of your body is, is underneath. So this is la sensación del peso está siempre debajo del cuerpo. So especially the elbows. Don't raise and get to this point that you're jammed up here, like that. Yeah? So try and bring your awareness to your elbows. Try un poco la sensación hacia los codos. Y es como si hubiese pesos aquí. The arms raise, but the feeling in the body is low. You're not there. Yeah? The feeling is low in the body. And then you cut. Yeah. 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 But not that, not that, yeah? you've got to be underneath, yeah? so you don't lose contact with the ground, it's like the weight is dripping through you all the time, so you may raise, but you don't get stuck up, yeah? the weight is dropping down, yeah? try that a few times, so spiral in the hands, weight under the elbows, don't lose the connection with the ground. Yeah. Good, good. From what I can see, it looks okay. This is pretty difficult, yeah. Okay, so we go now a little bit to the shoulder and neck, this area here, yeah. Okay, so I, when I when I had Nick doing the uh, the meditation, he was really talking about the sense of length, yeah, not height but length, yeah. So when you cut, really try and feel that this moment here. You, you maintain that length, yeah? yeah. But I'm not sort of doing this, and then sort of doing that, yeah. But you don't want to swing your neck back and forth. You want to stay as if your back is extending through your neck. So lo que quieres es que la espalda, la columna vertebral, se extienda a través de la cabeza. Y tiene que ser largo, no alto pero largo. Entonces, con los hombros y el cuello, no quiero tensión aquí. Yeah, tengo que estar largo. Y cuando cortas, as you cut, yeah, you stay long. Yeah? Yeah, you stay long. This, so I'm not doing this and then doing that, yeah? This and then doing that. So this will really cause a lot of stress on the neck. The neck should stay long, yeah? So wrist, weight under the elbows, and staying long in the neck, and making sure the shoulders are doing their work, but not jamming in the shoulders and pulling on the neck, yeah? So this is very important. All these points translate into Taijutsu perfectly, by the way, of course, yeah? Entonces, los espiral subiendo, el peso debajo de los codos, la sensación que el peso siempre está debajo, y el cuello que no lo estás haciendo de esta manera y los hombros bloqueando. Simplemente una posición natural. ¿Sí? Ok. Ok, let's go a little bit down to the feet, to the, feet, to the footwork. ¿Sí? So, try a little bit visible. Okay, in the, in the first saburi, what you do is you draw back and essentially 99% of your weight is in the back foot, yeah? And then you shift into 50-50 at the end here, yeah? So shift back, shift forward. Shift back, shift forward. Shift back, shift forward, yeah? Okay, so what you want to do is you want your center to basically kind of hang over your base, yeah? Okay, so here, and then as you shift forward, you go here, yeah? Here. So shift back, and then from 90, 99% of weight in the back, shift to 50-50 in the cut, yeah? Entonces el peso se traslada hacia atrás, casi 100%, 99%, y luego se traslada 55%, 50% en cada pie al final, yeah? So then just basically pay a little bit of attention to your weight, shift your weight into your back foot, keeping the left foot rooted in the ground, go to 50-50. Back, 50-50. Back, 50, 50, yeah? So shifting your weight. Traslada el peso entre los pies, 
y acaba el corte con 50% del peso del cuerpo en cada pie. Y el centro está sobre el medio de la base. And your center hangs over the, the middle of your base. Okay. A quick look. I see someone, let's see. Okay, easy, right, I can see that straight away, look. Okay, so the problem with the hips, <coughs> the hips is really, again, the knees, yeah? Okay, so the knees, if the knees are stiff, which for virtually everyone who sits down too much, which is nearly everyone nowadays, is that the knees kind of like just go to sleep for most of us, is that what happens is you end up doing this, you end up pushing this back, the knees are not really working, yeah? Okay, so the knees have to kind of spread towards the toes, both, so in the front and in the back, and then this allows the hips to move. If the hips are stiff, if the knees are stiff, okay, then what ends up, you, you end up pushing the hips back into this strange position, yeah? So allow yourself to drop and spread. Spread the knees, yeah? Spread the knees, so the knees spread, yeah? And that allows the hip to rotate, yeah? So get a sensation for your knees, yeah? Okay, try again. Dropping. 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 Spread the knees towards the toes. Especially difficult is the back foot, yeah? Most people tend to go to the middle. It needs to spread back foot towards knee over the toes. Las rodillas tienen que mover la dirección de los dedos, de los pies. No fuera de eso. Y no pueden estar congelados. Las rodillas tienen que moverse. Si las rodillas están congeladas, la cadera no puede funcionar bien. Entonces tenéis que pensar en las rodillas como la base de movimiento de las caderas. You need to think of the knees as stable. Okay? So just work on that, raising and spreading forward. Spreading forward. <coughs> Okay, so I'd like to also say something about balance, yeah? Okay, really being balanced is essential, yeah? Because if you are balanced, you will be functional, yeah? And this really goes back to combat, yeah? But being balanced is also going to be not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing as well, it's an emotional thing. You will be a sense of supported and calm if you are balanced, yeah? Okay, entonces, esta cuestión de equilibrio no es una cosa física solamente, sino es mental y emocional también. Si estás equilibrado, y, y, entonces va a haber un efecto en todo el sistema. So, as you swing this sword forward and you find you mobilize the joints in the upper body and the lower body, okay, it's very important that you have a sense that you are finishing in the base solid, yeah, and that you are balanced. So you finish here. Okay, you should feel that there's a kind of a sense of calm and that you are supported by the ground, yeah, okay? So be careful of doing this <clears throat> and then being stuck here, yeah? Okay, so if you're falling forward or if you're holding a lot of tension, Okay, this will block your movement. Yeah? But also there's a sense of anxiety in the body this way. Yeah? So being balanced is really important for us. Yeah? We, we, need, we need to seek a state of balance all the time. So seek for the feeling of being calm and supported and grounded. That's what, that's what you're looking for, really. Entonces la sensación de ser, de ser equilibrada es mucho más que físico. Yeah? Se trata a todos los niveles. Yeah? So as you do the cut, really feel balanced. Really feel that you're supported. You're like sitting in the ground, this kind of feeling, yeah? This. 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 Yeah, you should feel massive, solid, and expanded, yeah? Okay? Okay. Okay. Good, so let's look a little bit at the back and then we'll go to the hips, yeah? Okay, when you do this again, we, we just mentioned it before, keep your back long, keep your back long, yeah? Don't be going, boom, don't be doing this, yeah? So don't be pushing over with the shoulders, yeah? Okay, so make sure that as you cut, this sensation of being full in the back and long, it remains. 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 Remains, yeah? So make sure that your back, if your back is compromised or weak, 
everything you do in the front with the arms will be compromised. So you need to think that the, the source of your power is going to be in the ground and in the back. And everything in the front is going to be based on that. Yeah? So the sensation that the spalda is fuerte and that you are well seated is the base of everything you do in front. So this sense of being supported behind and below is essential for the arm work that we do in Aikido. The arm, just being in the front and working with the arms is going to be very weak. Yeah? You need to be behind you. Okay? Okay. So just those points. So wrists, elbows, neck, shoulders, transferring the weight. Knees spreading towards the toes. And this allows the hip to drop. The hip to drop. The hip to drop. Okay, so now we come back to the hip. This is the last thing I want to emphasize on this exercise. Okay, so what I want is I want to go back to the very first thing we do. So we're going to focus on the center, the caderas, how we're going to work with this. So go to this position again and stop. Now, feel your whole body and initiate from a sensation of dropping in the hip and let the sword go. Come to this point here, stop. Feel the hip and initiate from the core of the body and drop. Stop. Feel the core of the body and initiate the cut, the drop, from a sensation of moving the hips. Yeah? So the sword is an extension of the movement of the hips. Para en la posición de arriba, siente todo el cuerpo, feel your whole body, siente todo, y desde el, un movimiento en el centro del cuerpo, en las caderas, baja la espada. Baja la espada. The sword only moves because the center moves. Yeah? This is really the golden rule. Yeah? Yeah? That kind of thing. So just work on all those points, the arms, the legs, the back, the neck, the head, and initiate from the core of the body and let the sword just extend out from that movement. Yeah? At your own timing, just keep it. Let's do that for a little bit. So te manteniendo todos esos puntos, los brazos, las piernas, la espalda, y el centro, corta. 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 Yeah. Okay, so those are all the mechanical points. Okay, now there, there are several models which take this a little bit further in terms of developing the sense of extension. And one, one of them I really like is the six directions and then the eight directions. Six directions and eight directions model. No. So the six directions really are becoming aware of the space around the body. Yeah. So that being, being up and being down, yeah? Being front and being back, and being left and being right. So you're in, in the middle, basically, of a three-dimensional structure. So try and feel, especially, for most of us, the, weak, the back is weak. As you cut front and back, they have equal importance, yeah? So you cut front and back, not just front, yeah? But also back. So los primeros dos direcciones, de los seis direcciones es Es adelante y arriba. Let's look at it that way. Front and back. We'll do that way first. And the front and the back have equal filling out in your awareness. Yeah. So, corto para adelante y atrás. It's full. No simplemente para adelante. Yeah. Make sure that the back is really full in your awareness as well. So those are the first two directions. Yeah. Sometimes we mix it up with up and down. The first two, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So, keeping the sensation of your back. Cut forward, but full, it, full in the back. Yeah, there's no falling forward in the cut. Yeah? So this is really about extending into the space and filling out that space. Yeah? Extendiendo el espacio delante y atrás. Yeah? Okay, so the next one, of course, the directions three and four are about up and down, which are actually they're really the first ones. But, okay, so as you cut down okay, into the ground, you have the sense of length as well. So it's not about just cutting down like this. This means you're collapsing. Here means you're up all the time. This is too much up. So you need a balance between up and down, front and back. And then here. And then here. And then here. Be careful of going there. And be careful of going there. Yeah? So this is like a balance between these two directions. Up, down, front, back. These are the first four directions. Directions five and six, the side. This is a bit more tricky. Yeah? Okay, las direcciones cinco y seis, los laterales. Okay, this is really about the sensation in your chest. Yeah? And it's also really about your breathing and about your elbows. Yeah? So we see this more clearly in Taijutsu when you see this kind of stuff. Yeah? So the shoulders, la dirección across. So when you do the cut, have a sense that actually your chest is open. 
these muscles are being used, but you're not doing this. Yeah. So you would never cut like this, like that, blocking your front and blocking your breathing and jamming all these muscles across. Yeah. Okay. So try and feel that you have width. La dirección, que este, la, el, el, la respiración no está bloqueada aquí. Yeah. So as you cut, have a sensation of this is across the body. Yeah. Across the body. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, this really works if I think that direction is going through the elbows. Yeah. Okay. So the elbows are really in their position. They're not going to be jammed. They're not going to be too wide. They're going to be where they fall, which will be the positions where I'm going to be using for cockupid techniques. Yeah. And this will open the body up across this. Yeah. A bit more difficult to feel. Es un poco más difícil sentir el dirección 5 y 6, pero tiene mucho sentido. Okay. So we will re revise that. Vamos a resumir eso. Okay. La dirección adelante y atrás. Arriba y abajo, izquierda, derecha. So these six directions, try and cut with them all being full. Yeah? So, first the booty, there. 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 And we try to feel that you're in the middle of a sphere. Yeah? Just try those cutting for a while. Be conscious of the space around you in three dimensions. Intenta sentir la dirección. Alrededor del cuerpo en tres, en, en tres direcciones, en tres dimensiones. So you fill out the space around your body. And again, this really relates to martial arts because you need to be aware of the space around your body. Most of us are really in front and the back doesn't really exist. And of course, across the middle, most people don't know what that means, yeah? Okay, so this is again, developing an awareness of the space around you, which is essential for, for martial arts, yeah? So again, you can develop this with a sword. So Para artes marciales es esencial tener un, una sensación de, de conciencia del espacio alrededor del cuerpo y desarrollarlo completamente. Y eso se desarrolla también en el como una sensación. It's not an idea, it's a sensation in the body, it's a feeling. Yeah? The last two directions, which summarize the six directions, and this is inside, outside. Yeah? Okay, if the first six directions are complete and functioning and you can really feel this and you're balanced in the middle, then the last two are the inside and the outside, yeah? Which basically means that the center radiates out through the body and controls it, yeah? So that basically means that right from the beginning, keep your awareness to your center, okay? So initiate and cut. Go back to Kamai. Bring your awareness to your center, initiate and cut. Bring your awareness back to your center, initiate and cut. And then back. So basically, again, everything begins as, a, as an intention, which basically goes through your center and moves the periphery of your body. And this only works and is felt as real if the first six directions are actually open. If they're blocked, the, the, last, the center can't work. So be, in, in Japan, they really work with feet and the outside of the body and hands. And you almost get the sensation that they never talk about the center in some martial arts, but they wait until all of it is coordinated and working together before they start going towards the core of the body in the center. And this is the kind of the traditional way of working with it. Yeah? Entonces, generalmente en Japón hace mucho hincapié en los pies y en las manos. Y muchas veces pensamos que, que, que es solo eso. Pero luego eso tiene que estar en orden, la periferia tiene que estar en orden antes de que el centro puede funcionar de una manera óptima. So the center can only work if the body is not blocked. If the body is blocked, you have to unblock the body first. Yeah? That's the idea. Okay, so. I'm uh, running out of time. We're going to go into the fifth and the seventh suburi. Okay, so we'll do number five on the spot. Yeah, so it's a yoko minuchi. So kamai and itch. Ni. Sam. Shi. Go. Rok. Shich. Hatch. Okay, just continue your own tempo. Number five on the spot. Yoko Minuchi. It's a slanting cut. Have a look what's happening. Ah, oh, nice. Okay, a couple of points. Yeah. So again, number five really brings out this issue of the sword only moves because the body works. So be very careful of at this moment initiating in the arms. Yeah, I, I keep repeating this all the time, but it's really clear. Yeah. So have the sense that your body, your body moves, and then you really let your knees move. 
Yeah, so here, knees and then cut. Knees and then cut. So the center moves. So the sword is like lifted up from beneath, yeah? Entonces, la idea es que la espada solo se mueve porque el cuerpo se mueve. This is whole body coordination, which we're going to use for power, for cooking, yeah? So here, this. 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 So really bring your awareness to your body. In a way, the sword is completely secondary. La espada es secundaria. Siente que el cuerpo, la, esto es simplemente una expresión, una extensión del centro. Al cuerpo y mueve el cuerpo. Y la espada se va. Mueve el cuerpo. La espada se va. Mueve el cuerpo. La espada se va. Yeah? So do that slowly and really fuse the body movement to the sword. Motivate the sword from the whole body. Yeah? Try that for a little bit. Let's have a look. Oui. Okay, good. Okay, so in a way, if you think about the way this is organized, Shō Minuchi really is the basis of the cut, and Yoko Minuchi is, is, is not really a change in the arms, it's a change in the hip work. So when you do a Shō Minuchi, it's a straight cut down. Okay, when you do a Yoko Minuchi, it's a slant. Here, but the hips are different. The hips are going a bit deeper. Yeah, can't really show this on a film, huh? So I'm on the screen. But try and do this exercise now, like this. Watch. You're going to just do left foot forward, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to come to this point here, there. So again, step together, feet, and then cut back. So again, we're going to split number five into two steps. Really try and bring the sword to the to the halt so that it's above the axis, running through the body above the center. Left foot forward. Hidari hami. Okay, here, and then just move the right foot up and catch. Now, really feel that, that the sword is really like connected here. Yeah, and then just step back and cut like that. Yeah, so what you're looking for is really making a connection. You're trying to organize your movement. Left foot forward, move up. You've connected through the core of the body, the weight is down, and then the center, the center, boom. Yeah. So again, what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to train my center all the time when I do this, all the time. Yeah. Okay, left foot forward. Your right foot comes up, sword above the head. Okay, really feel that this connection is really there now. Yeah. And then left foot back, cut. Change foot, left foot forward. Itch. Knee. Left foot forward. Itch. Knee. Yeah, just try that. Breaking into two. Again, from the center. Let's see. That's it. Good, good, good. Okay, that's pretty good. Number seven, yeah? Okay, so Ken Kamai, okay? Rolling back, Joel and Kamai. Take your time, weight underneath, yeah? Okay, moving forward, cut into number seven. Okay, so you know this pretty well. Okay, back foot forward, Kamai, going back. Pause, feel it, you're really balanced underneath the sword. Center moves forward, cut. Center moves forward, thrust. And again, you finish in this place of rest. Yeah? Move back. Okay. Going back. Move forward. And thrust. Back. Going back. 
move forward and stop okay number seven at your own tempo try that Okay, so number seven is a great saburi for disorganizing your body. <laughs> okay, look, the first problem is how to go back. Well, you've got this weight in front of you, lifting it up at the same time. So we talked about this idea of filling out the front and the back. So this is really important here. So when you move back, uh, Michael, can you, can you help? Okay, try and imagine, uh, going to right hand me. Okay, hold a second, go that way. Try and imagine, when I say seven, that someone is like pulling you back from the back. In other words, you move back from a whole sense of rolling the hips, but the back is full. The back is full, yeah? So, yes, thanks. Yeah, so really try and get the sensation that when you move back, you move back, yeah? But you don't do this, like that. You don't kind of swing forward and back, yeah? Okay, so what you really wanna do is you wanna use the hips, but your, your, your whole sense is if you're being pulled back, you're moving back into space. So it's es muy importante al moverte para atrás, que no tengas el equilibrio uh, como colgado delante. Si no, empiezas a hacer el movimiento de atrás, empiezas a hacer algo así y luego tiras para arriba. Pero ese no es el movimiento. Eso significa que no estás centrado. So those are symptoms of really not being organized in a certain way. So, kamai, fill out the sense of the back and then just move back. Yeah? With a powerful sense of being balanced. Yeah? Here and then back. There. Yeah? Yeah? And then here, this position here, center moves. Center moves. Center moves, drops. Center moves, thrust. Yeah? So you're just training your center. That's the key thing. So really try and feel that these subtle things, they train your body to be aware and to fill out that space. But they also create, they're also about weaknesses in your structure when you move. You can easily lose your balance at these points. Yeah? So let's go again. Kamai. Moving back. Really, again, in the center. Moving forward, drop. Center, forward. And again, filling with a sense of rest in the middle. Yeah? So you do this slowly, full awareness, flood your body with awareness. And you do these movements, and really check the six directions. This is a very good tool. Entonces, cuando hacen los suburbios, tenemos que entrenar la sensación de estar llenando el cuerpo y abriendo el espacio alrededor del cuerpo también cuando los movemos para mantener el equilibrio. Yeah? Let's do number seven together a little bit. Yeah. Back, forward, here, and back, back, forward, here, yeah, that kind of idea. Yeah, just try that for a little bit. Number seven. Ooh, we've got five minutes left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm running out of time. So I want to do a little bit of body work. Okay, put your bokens aside. Put your bokens aside for the moment. Quiero hacer un poco de tai sabaki. Entonces poner los bokens a un lado ahora. Okay. So I want to relate this very strongly to the sword because for me the sword work is kind of the root of, of, of the tai sabaki, the body work. Okay, so just imagine you're in right, right hami, your sword there. And just imagine that you're lifting the sword. So this is again what we talked about before, this arc yeah, that you're using. Just lift the sword. As if you have the sword, just lift it. Just lift it. Just, again, here the weight is underneath. The body is solid. Yeah, that feeling. So just this. Just this. Yeah. So I'm, as if I have the sword, imaginary sword in my hands. Es como si tuviese la espada y simplemente trabajo de manos. Trabajo de manos es espiral. Yeah. Este espiral, yeah, that movement. Okay, so there. Okay, now, next step, yeah? Okay, separate the hands. Separate the hands as you raise them. Separate the hands. Separate the hands, yeah? Separate the hands. Separate the hands. Separa las manos ahora un poco. Desde aquí, levanta. Okay, levanta. 
your, your center is also moving a little bit more now. Yeah, so this feeling. This feeling. Okay, third step. Okay, now extend forward. Come back. Extend forward. Come back. Extend forward. Come back. Extend forward. Yeah? So we go from this motion to this motion. Yeah? So this is the classic handwork that we have. And this is completely sword work now. Yeah? Okay, so from here, just forward. Back. Open the hands. Forward. Open the hands. Let your hip really move in now. Yeah? Here. This. 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 Extend out. Now, as you're in this position here, your back should be full. You should be, you're not in front. Yeah? You're really in the middle of the movement. Yeah? Okay, now from this position here, turn, other side. 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 So, front, back, up, down, across, and center is motivating the hands. Center is motivating the hands. Yeah? So you have six and then the last direction. Moving, 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 moving. Good. Just try that for a little bit. Okay. Zengo giri, but just with the handwork. Cock your handwork. Okay, watch. So in a way, since you, if you haven't practiced these movements a lot, they feel a bit strange at the beginning. But when you have the sword, okay, it will be strange for you to sort of cut over there, like this, yeah? Okay, so don't have your hands all of a sudden over there like this. Again, in front, separated. So you should really feel that you're one thing. So when you do the sword cut, okay, you're complete. The whole body is connected. Entonces estás conectado con la espada, yeah? Cuando haces el trabajo de manos, when you do the handwork, really feel that you're connected. You're in a big circle here. Yeah? But I'm not doing this. Oof, like that. I'm not sort of letting the hands go. So try and feel that you are in the back. Underneath. Long. Wide. And one piece. And don't move and then move. Everything moves together. Especially the hips and the hands. This. 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 This, this, okay, have a go. Whole body movement, balance in six directions, and then adding the last two. Let's see how it finishes, we're almost there. Good, much better. It's 45 minutes, right? That's it. Okay, <laughs> that was it. I'm up. <laughs> okay, we'll bow out. Okay, so I told us before we bow, I'll give you a quick summary of what we did. Really trying to focus a little bit haphazardly because I'm not used to teaching this way at all. Uh, Developing this global sense of your body, a kinesthetic awareness which fills out your whole body, front, back, up, down, across. Yeah, your whole structure should be full. Yeah, okay. this idea of extension. Yeah, the sense that your feeling extends beyond the limits of your physical body this is really important for connection. Yeah, and the idea that we organize power in a certain way, which is the whole body generating the power from the ground as the basis through the center and expressing it through the hands. This is a, a code which is in all the internal martial arts. It's not just like, you know, the other martial arts are talking about this. This is an essential way of moving. So whole body awareness, which you can practice all day long, okay? Extension, which you can practice all day long and generating 
power as you push the, you know, as you push open a door or do anything. And just feel your whole body is behind whatever motion you make. Yeah, and these are basically three basic ideas uh, that you can apply in daily life and that are running through the whole system, for, uh, plus other ones. But those are three ones I just wanted to emphasize today. Entonces, lo que quería enfocar hoy es la sensación de desarrollar la, la sensación kinestética de todo el cuerpo en seis direcciones, arriba, abajo, adelante, atrás, izquierda, derecha, and then inside, outside, desde de dentro y desde afuera. La idea de extensión, yeah? esa sensación de poder sentir y abrir el cuerpo hacia eso, which is essential for the idea of connecting in Aikido. And then the way we use power in Aikido, which is we don't use part of the body, pero todo el cuerpo genera la, la fuerza desde el suelo, guiado por el centro y expresado en el arma, en la mano, en el hombro, lo que sea, dependiendo de la técnica. Yeah, those three things are kind of essential. Okay, I think that's it. Anyway, vamos a acabar ahí. Thank you very much. Thank you.